Hello guys and welcome to the Pro to the Cup by Smashcast TV. We have the last match of the day officially. Like, no matter what happens, this is the last match. I keep saying this, you know, last match of the day, but it is the last match of the last matchup between Elite Wolves and Wheel Rank while whistling. It's a best of three decides who gets to the winner's brackets finals. And honestly, everything is on the line. Elite Wolves managed to win the second game with a fantastic play by the Morphling, wrecking Wheel Rank while whistling, much like their name indicates. Wheel destroyed Elite Wolves in the first game at minute 21, and now Wheel is actually facing possible elimination in the winner's brackets and being brought down to the losers will they have to fight against Big Fan and go through a longer route to see if they can make it to the finals of this tournament and uh, they're looking to win this final matchup so that's not the case and Elite Wolves and newcomers into this tournament who have not classified through any of the winner's brackets I guess get proven why they didn't get to classify because Wheel is, is better in general and they already proved their medal. We'll see if that is the case. Of course, uh, we are here in the Protoduck Cup American Burnshirt, sponsored by XBet. And of course, anyone who wants to do use live betting onto the Pro Dota Cup matches, feel free to use XBet, and it's a great site to do so, as it offers favorable odds and, I guess, live betting. With the code BOUNTYX, you can actually access uh, XBet and get 200 euro or 100 euro deposit for free. So feel free to check that out. It's constantly spammed in chat. So not that hard to miss and we're we'll going into this last draft before we do so allow me to present myself my name is d swordfish and i'll be here with vate dota for the last game of the day how are you doing my friend hello everyone and here we see a deadly combination of sand king and ancient operation from side of elite wolves two supports very strong together decent ganking potential later on in the game with the ice blast and epicenter it will be easy to burst down the opponent team Will Wreck while Whistling started out with Clockwork and Earthshaker and Elite Wolf, who got the second pick, immediately answered with Bat Rider. Fairly interesting and smart pickup of an offlaner because neither Clockwork nor Earthshaker are a threat to Bat Rider. He can fly over any kind of um, objects with his Firefly, so there is no threat for him here. Yet, uh, Silencer and Weaver, pretty interesting pickup uh, for them. Question is, how is it going to be? So I believe that Weaver are going to be in a uh, carry position now for KVH, position 5, Silencer. They got a decent lockdown, especially through BKB with Clockwork, plus Cogs, plus Fisher, Echo Slam, very decent. Yet uh, the problem is that uh, Will Wreck while Whistling are forced to start fights uh, on their own, because if they will counter initiate it won't be that efficient from side of elite wolves that it's an immediate start with ice blast and epicenter or ice blast into flaming lasso and that's a minus one and if derp derp won't be fast enough it will be a disaster and here comes faceless void for elite wolves even a more decent setup chronosphere on silencer and this matchup seems quite tough for will even from the big face yeah, honestly, they're running really strong lanings uh, with the uh, really strong lanes, Sorry, with the Bat Rider and the Ancient Apparition here. Ancient Apparition on Masoko is one of his best heroes to begin with. You have the Ice Blast plus the Chrono, which is a really easy combo to get off and very effective together with the Epicenter. And of course, you still have the possibility of running a mid laner that can really take advantage of this Faces Void. And you're up against a Weaver as well, one of the heroes that's quite weak against Faces Void. And if you do go for a K position, Faces Void again, Mount of Style comes pretty easily. Silencer will suffer against you a lot, and at least will still the possibility even though it's not the most common thing for them to pick up an invoker for papita and take advantage of both the sand king in early sun strikes and the bat rider and later on against the fist's void chaos meteor inside that chrono will destroy anyone and we'll wreck while whistling's draft yeah it seems like a dream scenario for elite wolves to get their hands on invoker get uh, him in the mid lane and get a lot of uh, kills with sun strike and or strike uh, from that side. Will require whistling seem a little bit weaker as for me, unless they will go for some kind of an amazing, surprising pick in the mid lane. Yet, what can be possibly played there? No, we know Inigalate really likes Invoker himself, plays Lina, plays Queen of Pain. We've seen him on a DK a couple of times. Well, TA was banned out by themselves. Not that many options left for him. We've seen him on a Bloodseeker, yeah. though. It wasn't the. Uh, wow. his best hero and whoa mirana in the mid lane that was not that, i think it's a very good i think that's a very good pick to be honest even though uh we want to see invoker wanted to see yeah because combination of all his spells with chronosphere is literally amazing but mirana is starting to run around and uh, be a threat for everyone much earlier than invoker she got a very decent escape also 
as I already mentioned before, now they got two heroes, actually three, four, four heroes who don't care about Fisher in this game. Mirana, Batrider, Sanking, and Faceless Void. They can jump over the obstacles with no issues at all. And dream scenario for will require whistling if it will be some kind of an invoker in the mid lane. And for example, if Shaka is rotating their clockwork, they're trapping him in the cogs or blocking the way with the Fisher. And invoker is screwed. He can't really do anything. But Mirana simply leaps over it and bam, I think he... she's in safety. Here are the here are the ideas. Hey, I want to say LD actually. I like it a bit better than the Invoker, um, in in the mid lane. Even with the ideal slayer, like you mm -hmm. described, the OD is able to still get the setup with the Clockwork. No, fuck it. Yeah. Why even bother? <laughs> Why even bother analyzing? And they're not going to give him the ch the time to. Fine. Storm Spirit is also a really good pick. Honestly, Storm is actually a, a quite intelligent pickup. Like you mentioned, the Fissure and the the Cogs are not too effective against the Sanking, Mirana, Faces Void, and Batrider, right? So you don't really have a good landing phase because the Clockwork is completely destroyed in that regard. It's more of a harasser, if anything, to ensure that your landings can can get can be decent, but not again good. You won't be able to get kills out of them. So you get a hero where you kind of take advantage of the lack of reliable stuns in the enemy team. Yes, they have a Sand King with a Burst Strike, but Storm Spirit is great at getting Lincolns, and this game has been fantastic on him, honestly. They don't have many ways to cancel Lincolns reliably, because Cold Feet has a really long cast point. The Arrow is never going to catch a Storm, as long as Storm is not blind. And the Chrono is not going to catch a Storm, because his Bolt Lightning should be able to give him enough time, right? So, unless his yeah. Void gets a Blink Dagger really early, then Storm Spirit should be, take a, should be able to take advantage of this. More importantly... But the animation, though, on the Pestle Void and his Chrono Sphere is fairly slow, though. Exactly, that's the point. So his cast point is really large. So that, that means that Storm Spirit should be able to just run away from it. Uh, it unless, well, it's, if it's Ball Lightning level 2. But that said, it's also the fact that Storm Spirit does a really, really good job once you get to mid-game, despite your lane presence. If, even if the lanes go horrendously for him, he's still going to be able to recover by getting a couple stacks in the jungle, which Silencer should be able to do fine. So even if your lanes go the worst possible way, right, you know, they go haywire, similar to how we saw the, the second game, they're going to have a recovery, much more versatility, and they're going to have a nice late game as well, which actually compares to Elite Wolf's combo combo. And you go again for something that I do very, very much love, uh, which is that you see the enemy team going for a very big team fight wombo combo and you can do two things you can try to pick your own team fight and say fuck it we're gonna beat you or alternatively you can go for a very chaotic team fight combo in your own words so you have a storm spirit a weaver hard to catch these two in the same space you're not gonna have an organized team fight per se madman gives you all the team fight you need on the earth shaker and clockwork himself actually decided to be the offlaner because he again gives you that chaotic team fight that you look for against heroes like void or bat rider uh, or sanking as well who look for a much more five versus five to Typical engagement. So honestly, I was gonna go for Elite Wolves lineup because it seems really good, but I'm gonna go for Wheel. I really like what they did at the end. It's very, very clever. Yeah, and the Storm pickup is fairly well, especially it will be a major issue for Masoku. And that's a problem when you're playing as some um, kind of a hero as AA or Dazzle who wants to keep his distance from the fight, but it's not an issue for Storm Spirit to jump on you with Orchid and burst it down in a matter of seconds, yet there is a Fissure, they know that there is no... Oh, the Fissure could have been much better. Could have been much nah, better. he had but Burst Strike was... anyway, so I think it yeah. would fine. It was a good try, but... I agree, I agree. There's just a lot of good ideas for what uh, Elite Wolves is running. You also have Marana, who's pretty weak in the early game, and really relies on those stat gains and those levels early yeah. on, which Storm can punish as he usually peaks a bit sooner than Marana. Around minute, like, 10, like, once he hits level 6, Storm has a weird peak, where he, like, peaks for 4 minutes and then is useless again, right? Because you need your items. So, if you can get that Bloodstone in time, an Eilid could have a really big uh, power there. You also have heroes like, for example, Sanking or Void that can be caught out before they can get the proper initiation, as they do rely a bit on that good initiation. And... Yeah, no, I don't think this is going to be a killer. Yeah, Stinger's... Okay. <laughs> Stinger's like, yeah, you want to fight me? Come on! Come on! Let's fight! I have Burr Strike, I don't care! <laughs> that, was, that was a weird engagement, lost a lot of HP there, but he should be okay. He has uh, Tangos and Boots. Yeah, but he can't really annoy with Tom Spirit that much, especially against Static Remnant. Like, imagine your brother striking in and being like, Ha! I'm here! Gotta beat you on the get a Remnant in your face. Yeah, I mean, they want to... Oh, that was unfortunate. They got him with a burst. Like, ah, could have been. That arrow actually phased through the storm completely because of how yeah. weird cast point it has. Ah, that's unfortunate for Papita. They could have gotten, like, not maybe a kill, but at least a lot of harassment onto it. Oh, yeah. Well. I do like Stinger's build, though. I like the early boots. Not many Stankings go for early boots. They try to go for maybe a win lease at most, but it does give you a lot of potential to gank the mid lane. Yep, that's true. And in the end, it's an offlink clockwork and a position for 
of Shaker. That's an interesting decision. And what do you think actually about uh, Clockwork against Betra the lineup? They saw they placed it quite uh, weirdly. Uh, Faces Void is chilling on the bottom lane against the tri lane, and they put mm, Betra in a carry position, so they're securing a super early blink dagger at him, uh, on him because they know that most likely and Clockwork won't be able to annoy Batrider at all. They keep uh, Ancient Inspiration at pools. Um, Batrider can deal with Clockwork solo, perfectly fine. So that's a very interesting line decision for Elite Wolves, and I think it's a very smart one from their side. Mm. I mean, I, I, I do like that they're running the Faces Void because he can be running the off lane and just say, screw it, we're gonna at least give him until level 4 or so, so Batrider can get enough levels to be able to withstand some of the punishment from this lane. And later on, you can swap, swap Minos and put him in the top lane with the Void. That'll work fine. Only thing is that he's losing a lot of, of potential farm right now. And you do get the Clockwork versus Batrider matchup, which is definitely beneficial to you. But you don't necessarily want your Void to be really behind in terms of farm. He doesn't have the greatest recovery mechanisms, especially if Stinger yep. <laughs> keeps getting annoyed like this and he can't go help his carry. That's a huge thing. Because he's still your carry. You don't really have any other carry potential but him. And your Wombo combo is not good enough to really make up for the lack of Void power. Yeah. That's true. In this terms, having a Batrider in the offlane position who can always switch to jungle, get some stacks, uh, pick up his blink dagger fairly early. Mm, but I guess uh, they want to get it as soon as possible because with the blink dagger and lasso, it's a secured kill on Storm Spirit early on you know, with the arrow and Mirana. I think they will have enough damage, so maybe that's what they are going for. Because still, even with stacks in the jungle, you still need to commit to supports or whomever to make the stacks. Also, you're lacking XP in the very beginning. And like this, Ancient Apparition gets a, well, I want to say, complete free farm in his jungle. So, I guess why not? Uh, Stinger in the bottom lane. That might be harassed or Kinker slowing him down. Good, you know, the Fairy Fire should be able to survive this even with a swarm. Maybe Minos? No, yeah. They don't kill anyone there. And that ends up being beneficial again to Elite Wolves. They waste a couple of rotations, but you can see how hard it is to lane against a Weaver and a Silencer. And a Silencer in general is just making this lane impossible. And they're going to get a lot of advantage on KVH as opposed to the Void of being his lane. Don't know if the better getting an early Blink Dagger is that worth it, but we'll see. He seems to be going for a Drums build to get even more impact out of this. Not a bad idea, but they're really going to be able to... They really should be able to get a lot of uh, out of this Batrider. Otherwise, it's going to fight them or they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. That's true. Uh, well, now that's what's the question for? Um, what's the pers uh, purpose of of this Earth Shaker in this game? So far, we've seen his purpose being zoning out and annoying Stinger as much as he can because he can't really get a kill anywhere. Not mid, there is Mirana with her leap, so nah, kill is not possible on bottom lane unless um, Shaq will be baited in an unfortunate position or commit his time walk too early. Let me try to burst him down. Meanwhile. Masoko being trapped in a dangerous position, yet Clockwork knows his brothers, and I actually like the fact that Dota the two doesn't overcommit for this kill. I mean, that was just... Oh, actually, bottom lane. I did not see this, but you gotta kill Minos. Good job. No time walk, though, so he can make it a lot for this kill. No! Creeps! Ah, lol! He tried to deny himself, but did not find any creeps, and Minos will lose his life. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Should have gone to this camp instead, but he probably wouldn't be able to. Anyway, you don't commit with a clockwork when you have so many creeps around you. There's no way you can kill anyone. That's pure chance out of battery assault, and you don't want to play with pure chance in Dota. It's not Hearthstone, people. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, that uh, ends up being a uh, okay first blood for Faces Boy. I think he actually does benefit more from that, even if he dies. And now they can rotate him to the top lane, which is probably the reason why Minus decided to play so aggressively, thinking he could deny himself, and now he can just rotate to the top lane so it secures some farm, which is important on the Void anyway. And in the mid lane. Papita's still winning the lane against Thor, though by not, not by too much. Well, with the infused ra raindrops, I nearly late to suffering not that much at all. Plus, there are shrines available. He's abusing his bottle, so things are not that bad. Even though he got less uh, lost hits and denies, and Rana got a bit more XP. Actually, no, never mind, almost uh, half of a level more of XP. Annihilate is doing not that bad, and there is a major stack on the top lane. Probably could have been a sweet one um, to farm. Yet there is a rotation with a smoke from Sanking in the mid lane. They know there is a level 6 already up on Stomp Spirit, so they need to get a perfectly angled arrow. Yeah, I, I don't think they can They can accomplish it. It's really hard to kill Annihilate, but like you said, the ball lining is up. You have to get a stun first off, and Stinger is only level 2 anyway. 
Annihilate is, is getting a lot of punishment though. Maybe they can uh, trap him here. Oh, there they go. Ball lining. No, mu not much mana. Burst like finds him. Starstorm as well. There's the arrow and he will go down. A ballsy ball lining. Only level one. Too short to jump and Stinger punished that perfectly. That was just barely, barely clipping him with that burst. Like. Yeah, that's true. Stinger trapped again by the Fisher. I, I think they got some kind of a beef between that and Stinger in this game because Mad Manning is literally not letting this for sanking go. Meanwhile, advantage uh, is not that big from side of Elite Wolves, but still, they one they are one kill ahead. And finally, here comes the rotation on uh, bottom lane, Batch Rider, level 5, not that scared of anything. Um, farms uh, pretty decently, and Void is actually dealing with Clockwork, hookshot being missed, maybe he will pay with his life here. Still got nothing, got only Enchanted Mango and dies to a tower. Yep, well, <laughs> they punished him entirely, went, like you said, with a hook shot, and that wasn't too successful, and diving a void, maybe not the smartest of ideas, really punished for that. The Elite Wolves will continue their lead by 3 to 1. So, it's not looking, not looking too good for Wheel, especially considering their lineup. Of course, they still have a good mid game, so we were expecting these lanes to not go too well for them, and then to recover anyway. However, giving this much farm to the void is not ideal for them, especially because the Bat Rider already got a good, uh, good uh, start with the lane he was sent to. Yeah. We'll and see, if though. you will pay attention to the enemy jungle though. Oh, Careful. Actually. Yeah, bad rider. Fazer stops him. He still has Firefly, but will trigger another level of Arcane Curse. Slowed for a really long time. Been silenced as well. That Swarm plus the Arcane Curse is going to just slowly chip him away. And KVH is coming into this. In the end, magic is to use, but will not save him. That Swarm will end up finishing him off. And this poor bad rider losing his life, only giving a bit more gold to the enemy team. That's all he's worth for right now. Well, it seems like a. Uh... And decent timing to actually go and farm jungle now. There are plenty of stacks. The one of the major one, of course, is on the top lane between tier one and top. Yet there are a few in the jungle. So maybe that's the dream scenario for Bat Rider. And actually, interesting, instead of okay. going for that's like, a dead like a straight. Yep, <laughs> they even trolled him by letting him have a couple more seconds. That was a really bad play because Masoku now is going to get punished because of this. Oh, Midnight. Really? Midnight Shadow will save him. Masoku. Going away, Bad Assault can't find them. They have no detection whatsoever. We're not expecting that ultimate from Rana, and as a result, that's gonna be a surviving ancient apparition. Yeah, there is a still hookshot available on Dota 2, but I'm not sure if you wanted to commit that much. Uh, Bad Rider already used his Firefly, going for drums instead of a straight uh, big tiger. That's an interesting decision, in my opinion. Mm, yeah, I mean, he's, he's Chinese Bat Rider. You know, you, you get the early, late, oh, that's a dead Minos. Uh, you're going for the early game nomination, because you did. You sacrificed a lot of farm to get to the Bat Rider. You can't just have impact as an initiator and blink dagger. You want to have a bit more impact as a damage dealer as well, which makes sense this game. However, I don't know if that's the, the right choice against someone like Storm, for example. You do want the fast initiation for it. Yeah, that's true, because it would have been a fairly easy kill zone annihilate all the time, just with jump with the firefly, the lasso on annihilate, pull him to a better like uh, better arrow angle. Papita gets five second arrow, and with the level four stone stone finishing off, storm spirit. Not a not a hard thing to do, I must admit, unless uh, Will will commit a lot of heroes to defend the storm. But I guess uh, you want to. Outrun such heroes as Clockwork, for example. Oh, meanwhile, Masoko being tracked in Cogs once again. Five second arrow on Clockwork. Wow. He stunned Quantum Lord, but Papita is not committing for the skill, getting a Fisher in his face, blocking out the path. So he can't really do anything but leap all the, over the Fisher. And instead, going for Aghanim Scepter on Mirana, Papita actually goes for Dragon Lance and Manta Style later on. I guess it's some kind of a preparation for early orchid and global silence uh, from side of a wheel. Manta style is super important. Uh, Dragon Lance gives you uh, additional survivability. Also, you can keep the safe uh, distance uh, while attacking whomever later on it will turn into Hurricane Pike, most likely, but uh, after Manta style, yeah? yeah. So it's fairly decent against Clockwork. I mean, typical Marana builds nowadays are more of a physical dance Marana build, so mm -hmm. it's a very versatile hero in that regard. You can go for the typical Maelstrom or Diffusal Blade, right? Or you can just go for Manta style for more utility. It does give you really nice stats anyway, so it's not like Marana suffers from it. Um, I like the idea. Dragonlance first, like you said, to give you the extra survivability and really good stats, and then punish him a bit later with something else like a Manta. Now, Dota the 2. Try to find the Bat Rider. As Venus kills KVH, there they go on to Dota the 2, and he's probably going to go down. They even get all those stacks, but those, all those stacks go to Papita, even not the plan entirely. 
However, Papita gets a huge gold surplus from that and is now top of the net worth chart. And the Elite Wolves get their lead once again. Yeah, they're utilizing their spells fairly well. Still didn't manage to get that much of an advantage, but we haven't seen Storm uh, being active. There was also no global silence from inside of a wheel. Maybe a little bit later on in the game when we will see Bloodstone and Storm Spirit, things will be much better for them. But now, uh, Elite Wolves are much stronger with their their spells without any kind of um, items. Because, let's be honest, uh, Bet Rider relies on his uh, Blink Dagger, for example. Yeah, but why do you need it now? They got Chronosphere set up with the Time Walk from the Faceless Void. Plus Ice Blast. No, actually, that's a dead Masoko, I believe, here. Yeah, so unfortunately, they caught him with Arcane Curse and with a Hook Shot. And just a slight pause by Dota the yeah. 2. Uh, he's already stunned out. They're trying to get... <laughs> go, go. Let's see if they can stop this. Probably not. Stank, sanking. That doesn't have enough mana. Yeah, that's it. Dead Masoko. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh, oh. The creep's helping him out. No, they, they just come back to kill him. However, they might be able to counter-initiate. Stinger got a bit of gold, uh, mana out of there. The shrine. And they even stopped order the two. So that's going to be a, an offlaner for support. Definitely worth it for Elite Wolves. Despite yeah, the, even the though game. there were five kills in this game, Silence didn't gain a single piece of intelligence so far. You can't dive that deep. But I will, like, have to finish my point. There's already a blink tag up on Singer. Huh. That's actually a fairly decent one. Fairly decent timing. Hmm. I must admit. Yeah, Not that's so a really good timing, actually, for support shanking. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he's up there with the Bad Rider. I mean, ba he's got it faster than the Bad Rider, even though he went for drums. Mm -hmm. Let's see if they can make yeah. use of it. Yeah, they're actually going on the bottom lane. Derp Derp is the target of aggression. I'm not sure if they will even commit Flaming Lasso. I mean, why would you? No, you wouldn't. Of course not. You don't even... <laughs> There's no point. The Firefly is good enough. That's why you get drums, drums so you have more versatility as a yeah. hero early on. And you even see Minos interesting build going for the Mask of Madness of Void. Old school Dota, it seems like. And that Mask of Madness gives him a good bit of attack speed. Really cheap build up. Better than the Midas. <laughs> yeah, he missed two last hit there. And um, it's, in general, not a bad item to go into the void if you're not planning to go for the Mata Style Diffusal Blade build too early. It seems like it's going to be more of a utility void. Meanwhile, Masoko in the mid lane, destroyed by the battery assault. That clock will just finish him off. And the storm finds the Bad Rider, destroys him with the magical damage he has. Last word finding him, Derp Derp, with one last Glaives of Wisdom. No, actually, Rocket Flare finishes him off. Derp Derp takes away the intelligence. And with all this, Finally. they'd lose the two. Yeah. Well, there comes the rotation. Uh, no, Arrow nice. completely misses. There was no mana for Boros Strike. They could have set it up. Uh, if Stinger got enough mana, so uh, it would both hit by uh, Burst Strike and Arrow. Yet Masoko dies once again. <laughs> Poor guy! Literally, that's... I, I feel so sad for Masoko. Oh, Papita still got his Arrow. He's, oh my god, he's going for the greedy, greedy idea. He could have committed Arrow much earlier and get a, at least, well, probably not a secured kill. It stops very, but at least cancel the TP 100%, but instead, first, he goes for a Stone, Star Stone. So, obviously, he got a vision of Storm, but I don't know what was in his head in this moment, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know either, I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that he was really greedy, he wasn't expecting any global signs either, he thought, ah, I'm gonna get the kill anyway. And as a result, got killed, or sorry, not got killed, um, lost the kill. And, well, I mean, the Lily Walls are, are actually starting to lose in terms of net worth. Papita is staying up in terms of uh, farm, but the rest of the team, not so much. You also have Dota the 2 being the bad rider, which is not what you were looking for after all. Mm -hmm. And Minos will have to get some good Chronos here to recover. What is he doing? Go into the silencer. Surprise! Last word. Of course there's someone there. They didn't commit the Echo Slam. It's worth it. You got a kill on the Void. And there it is. Minos losing more net worth than he had originally. And giving a bit more gold to Annihilate to get an early Bloodstone. Not early at this point, but decent. Yeah, at least some kind of a decent. I think it's a good idea that they're committing all the spells without any kind of a regret. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, KVH dies to... That Rider, you won't be able to get a decent Echo Slam without Blink Dagger and Earthshaker all in all, yeah. And so, I mean, why not to commit it for a kill, but to wait for the perfect opportunity for your entire life? Hookshot was missed, uh, Mad Nank chasing, still got a Fisher, Masoko, oh, he's being cut off. There's still a Chronosphere on Faces Void, Ice Whoa. Blast is not there, what a... 
That was a really good Chrono combined with the arrow. Misses entirely. Wow, that's unfortunate. Mask of Madness. Ball lightning still available. And Storm might be fighting back. There's the battery saw stopping the void, but Annihilate was way too greedy there. Losing his life when he could have ball lightning the way. Papita came in. Destroyed by the Enchant Totem in the last word. He will lose his life to Derp Derp. Derp Derp will also loses his life to the void consequentially. And now it's Minus alone using a time lapse. Can they catch him in time? They don't have any stuns. He's going to time walk all the damage away. And KVH needs to commit to this. There's no swarm on him because they don't have vision. And that second time walk is coming soon. Mask of is used though he's been silenced and uh, kvh wants to get this kill won't be able to as the batter joins into the fray and elite wolves will survive minos not getting killed that engagement but they do lose i annihilate here for a wheel yeah that's a fairly big problem for them because storm spirit is actually in a, such a tricky situation that he is going for a, kind of a pricey uh, item early on to be successful in the KB5 basically. So, yeah, he actually completed power threads before uh, instead of going for cane boots. That's also an interesting idea by an elite. But I guess you want to get yourself uh, some kind of additional survivability against all this damage. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Stinger jumped by his Storm Spirit. Yeah, and every time Storm Spirit dies before the Bloodstone, his Bloodstone is getting more far and far away. And the components are quite a bit expensive unless you're having a lot of stacks or decent fights. After he gets his Bloodstone, every single death is uh, super sad for him because you're actually losing more than you're gaining. And Storm Spirit is a kind of a tricky hero in that regard, to be honest. That's uh, quite of a sad game for Annihilate, even though there is not that much of a lockdown from side of our opponent's team, but they were playing fairly well. Oh, there's Bad Rider. Last word hits him. Hookshot should impact. There it is. The hookshot hits, and so is the battery assault destroying. The battery ice blast comes in at the right time, and Dota the Too Much is burn and freeze to death at the same time. So ironic. He can't heal himself back up, and will he shatter? Yes, he will. That ice blast will finish him off. So that kill. Was that kill worth the mega kill streak? Probably not. Dota the Two. Well, actually, eh, mm, questionable. You did kill the Bad Rider before that. It's only Ancient yeah. Apparition getting you gold. It's not You're a big deal. You're delaying the Blink Dike on Bad Rider. Exactly. So like as much as you can. So why not? Oh, oh Echo, Slam. Echo Slam kills the kitty. Is that going to be a dead pussy? Nope. Papita should survive this Midnight Shadow. Now with the dust. And they see Papita entirely swarm. Slowly trickling her HP down. Quick, kill the bug. They're not going to be able to. KVH walks in and doesn't die. There is a dead Mirana, though, on the floor. And Wheel will just walk away happily wasting that Echo Slam. Well, Faces Void, meanwhile, farms his Shadow Blade. It should be expected, though, from side of a Wheel. They're already playing against Sun King Mirana, so they need to get a lot of vision. But you can't get sentries everywhere yet. Uh, Sun King uses his Boro Strike. Most likely, will be completely fine. Blink Dunk cannot be cancelled, but he got no DP feature. is catching him. Oh, that's a kill for KVH, finally, using his magic wand, but there is no escape for him. Almost completed Lincoln Sphere on Weaver, and I guess we will see a very decent fight. Here comes the Shadow Blade on Faceless Void, he's running in, probably tries to go for a solo kill on Storm Spirit. Ice Blast already in, Chrono Sphere committed, using his Mask of Bandas, Global Silence is too late. Doesn't really help for any late. And constant back and forth that make this game harder and harder. Uh, for wheel though they are coming up on top in terms of the farming games the storm is not able to get his bloodstone out but it's better to die now than to die once your bloodstone is up of course you don't want to lose those charges and meanwhile the weaver has been farming pretty efficiently even getting the linkage at a decent timing i mean getting a four minute 20 in general which is good together with all those like items I mean, his gold per minute is up to 450 and they do benefit from a lower gold per minute in general this game They're also going to find stinger and there's the enchant totem so many aftershocks stinger burst takes himself away but they have complete vision of him kvh not gonna let his insect brother go oh takes away the swarm can Stinger TP in time? He's a Blink Tiger as well. They have to cancel it soon. The Enchant Totem finds a Madman. Per perfect prediction with the Fissure to finish him off. And that's a crushed Arachnid in the mid lane. While on the, sorry, in the mid lane. Derp Derp being hit by Papita. They want to get the skill to miss the arrow. But the Ice Blast will not miss onto Derp Derp. Hitting him right in the face. And no! Derp Derp evades the last second. Too slow a ball. And Derp Derp is able to evade it all. Yeah. And there was also a missed hook shot. And what was interesting for the fight in the top lane. The... Uh direction choice for Sand King because uh, why would you go uh, from you know, away from your tower in case like your teammates can TP to it and try to save you that was an interesting choice uh, by him not just in my opinion Bloodstone finally completed on Storm Spirit and they need to utilize it as soon as possible they know that there is no Chronosphere no Ice Blast soon 
there is a smoke of deceit on them. And who is the target? They know that there are two guys on the bottom, most likely. Masoku is an easy prey. Same goes for Faces Void. They're jumping on him. Ooh, Faces Void, Echo Slam, they even see him. No Midnight Shadow to save you. Ice Blast will hit a couple by now. It's like, hey, let's kill me. That's Ice Cream Cone. He just hit me with his stupid Ice Blast. Masoku is going to try to fight this. Here comes the Epicenter, but the Storm has already ran away. No Cold Feet triggering. In comes the Batrider. Has the lasso. We'll find that Annihilate. He still has the Blood Stone to heal his old team. Where's the Clockwork helping him out? Actually saving with a Soul Ring. No, the Annihilate somehow getting enough mana to ball running away. And then afterwards die. KVH finding two though with a Swarm. Tries to kill off Stinger. And Stinger left alone against a Batrider. Saw won't be able to survive this as Derp Derp with still the global science in his possession wants to kill off the Marana. There's a ball lining from Iron Island. He TP's right in and the ball lining. Will they find a rocket flare against vision? And Storm comes in, drive by shooting, Minus and five. 10 Bloodstone charges onto him. That's actually literally amazing. Amazing fight from side of a oh, sorry. wheel, sorry even though Storm Spirit died himself. That was and got only 10 blast to charge us now. Managed to kill me run later on. Sorry guys, so we're gonna come back in a second. I don't know why the game just kicked me out. That was weird. No? Yeah. Well. Meanwhile, Faceless Void farming with his Mask of Bandits on, on the Ancients. He's level 16, fairly farmed. Next item, Diffusal Blade. And as soon as Storm Spirit very entrapped, in the chronosphere, he is turning into an easy break. Especially with the ice blast, a lot of uh, lockdown if he gets arrowed. Also, that's a very sad game for him. Question is, uh, which kind of item he will he get after the orchid? Uh, maybe some kind of a BKB, but I guess it's not that much of a help for him, especially um, against the chronosphere. I guess it stops uh, some damage from the um, ice blast. It's fairly important, but they also got a flaming lasso which pierces the magic immunity. So all his uh, precious BKB charges may go to waste, unfortunately. And is Blast it actually Blast a draw? Yeah. yeah. No, BK BKB charges if you will get it later on. Oh yeah, right, right, right. With the chronosphere and the bed fighter. Oh okay, okay, okay. It's because I right, because they won't do anything. Anyway, um, that's a dead Masoku. No big deal. Two support or um, off lane inner support. Sorry, uh, Dorfer's getting quite a lot of intelligence out of these kills though, which is not bad. Over Annihilate in the top lane. Chrono. Goodbye, Annihilate. Global Silence will be helping him out. No arrow to follow this up, but there's so many stuns. Annihilate. Run with the ball lightning so fast so they can't catch him. And ooh, Sonic the Hedgehog makes it out of there alive. But in comes Dota the 2. Echo Slam onto 2. And that's fantastic. Dota the 2 actually suffering the last of it. So okay, because Stinger's already dead. And they're going to go onto the Clockwork with the fit. And Blame actually helps him out a lot there. He's stunned out, but he did his job. He dealt a lot of damage. And now with the Swarm, they can find everyone down. And the first one to death is Mirana. They dust her up and destroy her. And this poor Batrider can't get away because his dust is still catching him. And the Arcane goes for Swarm will just finish him off. They even Fissure the Void. KVH is still finds him. He hasn't been dusted up, but the Midnight Pulse is finally gone. He has to time walk himself away. There's the Mask of Madness. KVH can't see him in time, and they can't actually bot lining to him as Storm does not have enough mana. Unfortunately, this Void will make it alive. However, Marana and Batrider both die there in a great counter-initiation by Dota the Two, sacrificing his life for the good of the team. And finally, that was a great global silence by Derp Derp saving the life of his teammate is actually absolutely insane and if it will ha keep on happening every single uh, team fight Storm Spirit will stack up uh, his um, HP probably a little bit so Faces Void won't be able to finish oh. him off in the Chronosphere by himself but with the Diffusal Blade I'm not sure there's going to be a lot of damage on Faces Void after that it's going to be a Manta style and that's a big threat for Annihilate and that's time to actually question his positioning uh, in this game, because on the positioning of a Storm Spirit, I guess uh, they rely on it too much. If he gets trapped in the chrono, the fight is automatically lost for real. That is true. You know, you really can't let Storm Spirit get trapped up, but there's no blink dagger yet on the void. He's relying more on the Shadow Blade initiation, which could be stopped, honestly. You do have a lot of ways to stop that chrono, and with the Global Science, they actually were able to save the Storm Spirit from dying in that engagement, which is also pretty good. And of course, with a long ball lining, you're safe because the, the, the void did not go for the Fusal Blade build just yet, right? So now, once he grabs it, they may be able to stop it. Um, I don't know. Maybe KVH might even. Consider investing in an Agnum to save the storm, depending on how bad this goes. However, he's become quite an important carry himself. 
So, and the yep. Clockwork himself also have, has a good counter initiation with the Medallion as well, so, saving the Storm from some of the damage. As the Fusible Blade is also physical damage itself. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Honestly, it's, uh, it really does depend on execution so much this game. And so many hard things to execute with large cast points. And the Wombo combo for Elite Wolves doesn't work too well for them. But we'll see if it works a bit better now that the late game and people play a bit more together in these 5 versus 5 engagements. Okay, what are you doing, Sting? <laughs> Stinger, please don't sandstorm in the middle of the. Yep, see, the storm wants to kill you and he's gonna find you. Here's the random to get vision, stunned, destroyed with a swarm, no armor, no life. Yep, that's a lot of uh, damage and additional blast on charge for Iron Elite. There, yet all the big buttons are up from side of um, Elite Wolves and pushing high ground against Chrono, Ice Blast, and Mirana may be not the best idea, to be honest. Yeah, they yeah. got the Global Silence, they got an Echo Slam, but it will be a pretty... And Rocket pretty Flare tough. for Vision, so that's also quite important as well. Yeah. Well, let's see how they are going to defend this. Will they even commit for the high ground? KVH already stands uh, on the enemy high ground, hitting tower. Mm -hmm. Hitting not that strong, no, probably as we may have wanted. Yet they're going for a kill. They scouted out that there is a Shack here. <sighs> oh, that was a that good guess, but Mad Mang. No, it hit yeah. him. It just doesn't see him. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunate. It's insanely unfortunate for Will, I must admit. Meanwhile, Stinger, actually, he's asking for death here. There's a Fisher up. Okay, that was a Fisher stopping. My Annihilate also killed Masoko in the back lines. There's a Midnight Shadow, already, Moonlight Shadow, sorry, already used to uncover the whole team. Elite Wolves with the Shadow Blade. Can they find the Weaver? They actually have no vision of him. Should I just Shikuchi? There's a Dust. They know that sh that the Void is there. And they're gonna find the Sanking instead. Already killing him off. That was just an easy kill for these guys. They go for the Marana a bit more. That's the objective. Papita. Maybe even better the Void would be ideal. But we're now not finding anyone just yet. Uh, here, seems like Minos is still in a bad position. Door to the Tomb. They need vision with a Rocket Flare. I guess that uh, Faces Void is waiting for the god golden opportunity to get both uh, Silencer, for example, and Storm together. Yeah, in the Chronosphere, because if he doesn't get Silencer, they can't really kill Storm. He's fairly tanky now, he completed his uh, Orchid. Also got a dust on himself, so he's ready to fight against Faces Void. And instead of going for Manta style, Void goes for BKB. Interesting choice. Meanwhile, they're coming on the mid lane. Papita being bursted down. Mad Mang committed Echo Slam. Here comes the urn. Tries to run away. He he's being yuled. Meanwhile, and they jumped on poor Bad Rider. He is silenced. Masoko tries to defend his teammate. Not really working out. Maybe that's a lost age. It's here. Yep. Never mind. Insane damage from Mad Mang. Stinger jumps in. Loses his life. That's a chronosphere, but on Ionelid. But oh my god. He is completely out of mana. He loses ages on Stone Spirit. Oh, the no. Derp Derp being trapped. Oh no. That, no, was oh, yes, that was terrible. That was terrible by Elite Wolves. They they committed onto an H that did absolutely nothing. They would forgot about the Global Science yeah. completely, and they they killed Annihilate when he still has Why twenty charges to, anyway. To go for ages. Why do you need to go for ages? Kill it was though. Only that yeah, exactly. That's that's the point. It was horrendous. It was not a good. Well, not horrendous. Sorry, it was questionable. That was not a good idea at all. Annihilate got hit by the ice path, but doesn't really care. And now it's at least two lanes of racks, if not not like thrown even i mean they could at least try to force some buybacks they know that the enemy team has no buybacks which is why they're going for two lanes of rasps at the very least and all masoko's trying to do is gain some time but look at this annihilate getting more bloodstone charges from the little ice cream cone it's time to go for the melee racks themselves and with the enchant totem and of course the damage that this whole team has it's really hard for them to defend this annihilate really excited about how they're winning this game already you know they decide to retire try to go for some shrines mirana uh oh is this the best of options moonlight shadow already committed by her as soon as they see her is there dust, dust, dust? No, they're not gonna. No, there's, please there's don't no commit. Just run away. Come on, please. Papita. Papita. Oh, everyone's oh, no, coming in. Seven. There's the epicenter. Oh, come on. There they go. Whack the tail. They don't stop Stinger in time when they actually hit the clock. But the whole objective here is to go for the Marana. She's been silenced. The good game comes out. And wow, Papita gives up. After knowing he lost Marana a second time, Wheel will be taking game number two in the weirdest of fashions. Minute 29, not even minute 30, they destroy the Peruvian squad of Elite Wolves and win this best of three, 2-0. That was actually a really amazing oh, two -two -one, fight. 2-1, sorry, what am I saying? Yeah, <laughs> that was an am amazing game all in all, and even though the combo moment from Serbia and Wolves was like, superior from the first side, Storm Spirit the last pick which i guess won the game for will amazing performance by them they really deserve this will uh, this win and now they're going to face thunder awaken in the 
when it was finals. I get a deja vu feeling a bit. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see what happens in the lower brackets where also guys from Elite Wolves will have to face against Big Fan, see if they can remain in the tournament and reclaim their, their spot that was kind of given to them or if they will just be phased out completely by the current integrants of Pro Dota Cup. That said, guys, this is the last match of the day, of course. There's literally not enough day to continue anyway. So, it's 8 in the morning. The sun's come up. For those of you who live in Europe, those who live in America, it's actually going down in the, the course of today's games. Hope you've enjoyed the games anyway. Of course, feel free to check out our Twitter. My name is at the Swordfish and here with at Vate Dota if you did enjoy the cast. If you did not, feel free to check our Twitter anyway. Just flame us instead, right? Instead of giving us compliments. And of course, if you guys did not were not able to watch the game fully for whatever reasons, you can check out my Twitter personally at, at the swordfish there's a link to my to the YouTube where I put up all the VODs with of course all the information about the teams and those will probably come out before the next games of Pro Dota Cup we'll come back tomorrow with some more lower brackets and winner brackets for Pro Dota Cup American version and of course all sponsored by Expet hope you've enjoyed uh, the day as much as I did and we'll see you guys soon with some more Dota 2 until then guys <laughs>